In December 2015, SpaceX marked a historic milestone in its life. After suffering many explosions of orbital rocket boosters on the drone ship, the company finally landed its Falcon 9 rocket. That first achievement paved the way for SpaceX's 238 successful workhorse rocket landings to date, which is many multiples of the number of rockets launched by all other United States companies in the eight years since. Of course, all that history wouldn't have happened without the help of grid fins, which are essential to SpaceX's plans for controlling the flight of its rockets as they descend through Earth's atmosphere. Following the Falcon 9 success, that concept was extended to the Titanic Super Heavy booster that comprised the first stage of the company's Starship rocket. However, standing apart from its predecessor, the grid fins on Super Heavy have some modifications for Starship's unique design and goals. So, how much important the grid fins are for Starship Super Heavy? What is the difference between the grid fins on Starship and Falcon? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. On November 16th, while SpaceX fans were holding their breath for Starship's most anticipated event, IFT2, suddenly Elon Musk tweeted, we need to replace a grid fin actuator, so the launch is postponed to Saturday. In fact, shortly after Starbase welcomed the sunrise on Thursday morning, SpaceX's team performed a test of the grid fins that surround the top of Booster 9. They are each powered by a separate actuator, which sits within the booster structure. These pieces take responsibility for controlling the hypersonic grid fins. In the afternoon, SpaceX once again separated Starship's two stages from each other. It's also the time Elon Musk posted his tweet. Perhaps there were some mistakes found in the morning test, so the repair would be needed. After the D-stack, before 6 p.m. the same day, the hot staging ring was removed to allow the crew to access the situation. Close to midnight, it was the three actuators' turn to be removed from the booster then replaced by new ones over the next hour, followed by some testing and checkouts. Everything ended up with the final test with the new actuators, and the hot staging ring came back to its position on the booster at 2 a.m. Friday. Even though this delay came up unexpectedly, it could not disappoint the company's fans. On the contrary, it made them even more excited, because they know that SpaceX wants to prepare the best for the upcoming flight as well as avoid mistakes causing serious aftermaths. What if the actuator was broken because it was loose or wouldn't lock at all? Of course, the grid fins will not be able to perform their ability during the booster's re-entry. So happy to inform you that no error on the grid fin was found in Starship's second orbital test flight. For a reusable rocket like Starship and Falcon, the additional grid fins play an important role in the landing of the booster. Grid fins are a type of flight control surface commonly used on bombs and rockets, originally developed by the Soviet Union half a century earlier. A grid fin is a lattice of smaller aerodynamic surfaces within a box. Because of their unique design, they often get compared to waffle irons or potato mashers. As you can see, Starship's grid fins are pointy and sharp. I feel it look quite scary like a shark's teeth, which could be the reason why its other name is Potato Mashers. Or more simply, Elon Musk wants to terrify his enemies by its pointy corners. In fact, the curve helps reduce drag, especially at supersonic velocities, an important factor for missiles and rockets, for which fuel is very limited. Having a hyperbolic curve for the leading edge plan form shape provides for a lower drag, in particular a lower wave drag. This means that the grid fins could be used as efficient lift and control devices and surfaces for supersonic flight vehicles. These steel waffles feature 16 feet or nearly 5 meters in length, more than half the diameter of the Starship and 8 feet or 2.4 meters wide. Super Heavy has grid fins to help with aerodynamic pitch, controlling the descent back towards Earth and being caught out of mid-air. One of the main reasons Super Heavy has grid fins is to control aerodynamic pitch. 
While falling back towards Earth, the grid fins are capable of adjusting yaw and roll. SpaceX intends to catch the booster by Mechazilla in midair, which requires extreme precision and almost no room for error. Thus, four grid fins are needed to control and adjust the booster while in flight in the right direction. In short, SpaceX needs as much control as possible to ensure the booster is positioned correctly when it's attempting to be caught. The grid fins will help provide some of this accuracy on the way down. In addition, grid fins on Super Heavy help control the descent. Not only will they be capable of helping orient Super Heavy on the way down, but also slow it down. On the way down, Super Heavy will be going extremely fast. Fortunately, at that moment, with the upper stage separated and the majority of the propellant used, it will be much lighter. Although SpaceX designed the curved corners on the grid fin to reduce drag, as I said, they also added the X-shaped grid to produce some drag for the balance. This could help slow down the booster on the descent prior to a landing burn. Another unique part about the fins is that they will not be capable of folding. This means when launching, they will be fully extended rather than tucked away. This will be not a big deal for the ascent because of Super Heavy's power and mass. The full Starship weight combined with over 30 Raptor engines and the designed pointy fins will dwarf any drag. Additionally, this is a big reason why the fins are so big and made of steel. This is necessary to withstand all launch and landing forces and be durable for repeated reuse. As a part of the SpaceX reusable launch system development program that has been underway since 2012, the grid fin development is considered one of the game changer factors for SpaceX. The first hypersonic flight test with grid fins was in February 2015, and grid fins were subsequently used on all reusable Falcon 9 experimental test landings and, eventually, after December 2015, an increasing number of successful first-stage landings and recoveries. Thanks to that, nowadays, SpaceX can earn a huge economic benefit based on reusing Falcon 9. Following the success of the Falcon 9, Elon's company hopes they will apply this grid fin feature to Starship and achieve the same or better results. However, Super Heavy's grid fins have some modifications for Starship's unique goals. First of all, due to the huge size of the Starship, the fins on the Super Heavy will of course be larger. But there's also another difference. The Falcon 9 first stage tucks its grid fins down during launch, minimizing atmospheric drag on the way up through Earth's atmosphere. By contrast, Super Heavy's grid fins are fixed in an outward position. This is likely because SpaceX engineers calculated that the mass penalty for a system to retract and extend the fins was too high and possibly because doing away with such a system reduced the work and time needed to refurbish the first stages between launches. However, the grid fin still needs to be moved in pitch, yaw, and roll to steer the rocket. To adjust the fins, the company adopted an electronic steering system different from that of Falcon 9 running on hydraulic fluid. This relies on an actuator to transfer this electric power and move the fin. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.